To those that are following the channel and are subscribed to Dave Weep Speaker Design, I'm going to start by answering the question that everybody's probably wondering is if I'm calling this channel Dave Weep Speaker Design, why exactly am I building a kit? Simply put, uh, after building the Uglis 420 pair that you see behind me there, I very quickly realized that there was uh, just a whole ton more information that I needed to learn and I figured the best way to do that would be to uh, first start with a kit and a kit that's I think is a good fit or will be a good fit for me and understand exactly how some more things are working inside of that kit. Um, take a look at the crossovers and just understand more on a hands-on practical level before I get myself in over my head. And building speakers like that and just learning by building and building and building is not very budget friendly. So I think this is a smarter way to go. Anyway, that's why I'm building a kit. I settled on the Zaf Audio kit because it has a lot of the same components I think that I want, uh, namely the driver, and it does focus on clarity and sound quality and they also do mention that this is a classic rock speaker or a anybody that's a fan of classic rock which i'm a big fan of that this is the speaker for you so let's see if that holds true i will take you guys through the whole process of building this kit start to finish any feedback you can offer is more than welcome so taking a look at the Zaf Audio kit, the exact kit that I got is the optional accessories package. I did opt for that and I also upgraded to the uh, premium capacitors for the crossover and I think that's going to provide me with better sound. I, I really don't like uh, tinny or I just don't like annoying highs that are not clear. So I could see that being very fatiguing. So if I want a system that's going to be the best for me in the long term, I need to upgrade the capacitors. I think the sound quality is gonna be worth the trade off. It's an extra $376.60 to get better quality sound from that crossover. So I did opt for that upgrade as well. So as you can see, the kit price here, 1920 and 60 cents. All the information that you need is pretty much provided. They don't give you cutting instructions. So I'll briefly go over that with the lumber that I already have cut. I do like the optional accessories package because uh, Kusta stuff is included. That's actually the reason, the single reason I opted for it. Because finding that in Canada is a little bit tough. And I didn't want to just go with polyfill because there is some data or some research and people that say that there is a difference between the two. So let's just do it right the first time and then I can kind of go based on that. The other thing I do like about the kits, they will be assembled with the crossovers. We'll take a look at that uh, as we get a little further. But anyway, there's the whole Zaf Audio kit. That's the kit I plan on putting together. I do have the lumber all rough cut, so I'll go over what I learned there. For those of you that want to build along or build this same speaker set. So as you can see, the material I opted to use to build these speakers off of is uh, birch plywood. It is 18 mil or three quarter. And all the pieces are already cut, but none of the holes have been done. As you can see, this is the face. There's no holes in here yet. All these side members and even the angles are all finished up. And I also did go through and dado these uh, left and right for the back. So the back will actually sit into there. It'll make assembly easier. And uh, hopefully I can get a perfectly square box out of this whole deal. So here's the layout of uh, the pieces. It does take two four by eight sheets of material to get your all the speaker uh, components you need. This is how I laid them out to get them all cut in. Uh, I'm not sure if this kind of makes sense to you, but this is the primary cuts, and then this is the leftover out of the uh, 40 inch, 48 inch length. Uh, that's what's cut out, and these are the lengths that are cut out of that 12.25. Then with a piece left over, you cut this out. That lets you do these angle braces here for this top out of that material as well. And it gives you a little bit of an oversize to cut those angles. Now there's a couple of things that I did end up having to change. So according to Zaf's design, this is a one inch thick piece of material for the front. 
Now I didn't use a one inch uh, piece of material just because it was not available and I didn't feel comfortable laminating two pieces. I do understand why he does have that in there and that's quite simply put for the large sub driver this thing ends up this flange ends up flaring into the piece there 10 millimeters and uh, three quarter inch birch ply is 18 millimeters so it only allows eight millimeters of thickness for these screws to bite in. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting a disc that's going to laminate right onto the front of my three quarter inch birch ply and that'll be either an eighth or a quarter inch thick. I haven't uh, bought the material yet but uh, either or is going to be fine and that's going to give more material on both sides the top and bottom for the subwoofer to kind of sit on. The downside to that is the volume of the internal speaker is going to change slightly. It's going to be almost nothing and I'm sure audibly uh, it'll be next to impossible to notice. There is one that may change the how the speaker sounds and that's uh, this is the 18 millimeter birch ply same with this and same with this it's all 18 mil birch ply but what ends up happening is 18 mils isn't exactly three quarter of an inch so I did have to take one millimeter off of this back and I did have to take one millimeter correction a half a millimeter off of these pieces so that when it gets assembled the interior pieces were cut exactly to this dimension 12 and a quarter by 14 and a half that they're going to sit in there perfectly. So there's a couple of small small differences and I mean a half a millimeter probably is nothing but I'm going to be totally transparent with the assembly. Now as mentioned the only thing that you could do to do this better is measure the material exactly with the caliper and I didn't do that soon enough. I did it later on. I was able to fix the cuts that were uh, just not right to get these interior baffles to fit exactly. But yeah, they're, they're not exactly three quarter of an inch. So it's a millimeter on the back or on the sides and it's a half a millimeter on the front. Is it the end of the world? It probably will change it almost nothing, but yeah lesson learned as always you can never trust uh three it was advertised as three quarter inch not 18 millimeter otherwise i would have caught it when i bought the material uh so what's next up for the material that i have not done yet is the front faces the holes and the flanges have not cut those out and as you can see the interior baffles they also are still solid which would uh definitely not work i do need to uh, trace this out and trace this out make two of each one for each cabinet to get those holes in there so that the subwoofer can breathe and take up the whole cabinet space uh, but other than that their lumber is all cut I also did not cut the lumber at home I happened to have a brother that was a cabinet maker for a number of years and shout out to John thanks again for uh, letting me uh, come down to your place and he cut the lumber for me it's exactly right. It's everything is square, everything, and I mean you can you can see it by the pieces. <laughs> this is this is done by somebody who knows what they're doing with a saw, cuts like this, and like even the finished edges of the birch ply, they're just perfect. I could probably make a very nice job, but I can't do that with the tools that I have. I just don't have cabinet tools at home. Could it be done? Yeah, 100%. If you uh, want to do this kit yourself, you will need something to run the plywood sheets and cut them down. You can just use like a rail saw. That would do the trick really nicely as well. And then for uh, the angles, probably a table saw, I'm guessing. Maybe you can do it with a rail saw. I don't know. Don't have that much experience with them. I do have a table saw, so that's my go-to if I need to cut the angles. But uh, ripping down 4 by 8 sheets of plywood on my little portable so it isn't exactly the right tool for the job. This is what I was going to cut the uh, circles out of, but uh, yeah, I botched that. And you can see they are rectangles, they're not squares, so and they're too small for the backing. So I'm gonna have to do something else there. So I guess I gotta cut those as well. And that's the circle for the backing. Anyway, that's uh, the lumber, there's the cut list. Uh, I will share 
uh, or you can just pause the video and take the cut list for what you want to do if you want to make this kit along with me. And those are all the pieces. That's step one. Uh, in the next video, I already do have the all the components and everything sitting uh, just on the other side of me here. I'm going to unbox everything and take a look at all the components, the drivers for this Zaf audio kit.